Hello guys, welcome to Redditor's Revenge. Here we post amazing revenge stories daily. And if you want more content like this please do subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with us. Moving on to today's first story, in which OP teaches a hard lesson to one of his spoiled student, whose father was powerful politician. So OP destroyed father and son's arrogance. Now story. As a high school teacher, I 31M have had my fair share of difficult kids to work with. Sometimes the job is downright unbearable, but I always loved my kids and getting them to see just how cool history can be. I used to teach middle school, so kids making noise was always a thing, but there were rarely any malicious students. Because our school was in a nice district and it was private, you get your son of an important person every once in a while. The plan was to always just teach them normally as any other person would, since you can't give them special treatment in front of the other kids. I've had sons of actors, singers, and even football players. I always knew how to handle situations, and I stopped getting angry and lashing out ages ago after I was done with middle school, but you get the occasional ruckus now, and then. It was the first day of the new year, so obviously everyone was on their toes and things were still up in the air. I had a class of mostly new people and only a few of them I had taught before. I entered the class on my first day as I always do, started getting to know the students, and things were going quite well. It was business as usual, until the principal walked in with a new student, took me outside for a second, and told me that he was the son of a very important politician in our city. This was the first time I had a student who was the son of someone with actual power, and not just entertainment, so I was excited to see what he would be like. I expected him to be a good, decent person since he must have grown up in that very professional environment. It was a pipe dream, however, as soon as I entered the class, I found him pinning another kid to the ground and taking his food. My first instinct was to of course send him over to the principal's office, but that wouldn't work, especially considering the fact that the principal was right there. Right then and there, I knew it would be a difficult year and not at all what I imagined it would be. The next day, I arrived to see that kid, whose name was Steven, gathering a bunch of kids in class as I entered, showing them something on his phone. I repeatedly asked him to stop, but he wouldn't do it. When I walked over there to see what he was doing, all the other kids backed away, and he tried to close his phone, but I grabbed it quickly. When I looked at what he was showing them, I was genuinely surprised to see him having pictures of a female teacher colleague of mine, and showing them to the other kids. I went back and saw that he had her Facebook profile open. I sat him down outside to tell him that this was inappropriate, and that he shouldn't do this again but he didn't look like he cared at all and he just looked bored. I kept telling him to pay attention and that if I ever see anything like this again, he would get detention, but he just nonchalantly entered the class again. I felt genuinely challenged and that I had a student who may not care at all about what we are teaching, and it made me angry. On some days, he was absent to be traveling with his dad or whatever, and these were the days that we got some actual stuff done. I was so happy to enter a class and not see him, but that couldn't be the case every day of course. I tried talking with my principal and colleagues several times about this, but they would just tell me that there was nothing we could do and that we had to just suffer the consequences. I didn't want to completely give up on the kid, but he was very, very difficult. On another day, I walked into class and things were quiet for a few minutes. Later, I heard this strange sound coming from the back. I walked over there and found that he had his phone on and watching stuff on it. I confiscated his phone and he went into a frenzy, being rude and talking back to me. I had had enough with him, so I sent him to the principal's office and everyone in the building was gasping and genuinely shocked that I did that. Even the principal himself wasn't expecting this, as he immediately texted me what the hell. Everyone was afraid this kid would tell his dad something and that his dad would hurt us somehow, but I was fed up and didn't care anymore. The principal had to just give him a talk and when he went back to class, it was like he put on his battle mode. For the next few days, he had a target on my back. He would be extremely rude to me in class, disrupt my lessons, and make the other kids just as lazy and talkative. It became extremely hard to even teach and I kept missing my lesson plans and was constantly behind. One time, he came to class late and when I asked him, he told me that it was none of my business and that I should just go back to saying my nonsense. I knew that nothing would work to make him correct his attitude. On another day, he did what was probably the worst he had ever done. I entered class, sat on my chair, and all of a sudden, I felt extreme pain from a large pin that was placed on the chair. 
I got up and cried in pain, but the whole class was silent except for him who was tearing up from laughter. I had had enough of him, so I didn't send him to the principal's office, but right there and then lost him his entire mark so that he would fail history no matter what, and gave him after school detention for an entire month. The next day, while I was in the middle of my lesson, a bunch of men in suits entered my class and grabbed me. They told me they were from the government and kept asking me about my political tendencies, and even kept asking me if I knew anything about ISIS or terrorist organizations, because I looked Arab as my mom was Libyan. I was so confused and frightened, especially since all of this was happening in my class in front of my students and I had no idea how to react to all of this. All of a sudden, an older-looking gentleman entered the class and told me that he was Stephen's dad. I finally got a look at him, but he didn't seem that intimidating, until he started humiliating me, yelling at me, and insulting me in front of the whole class. He told me that I was a horrible teacher who didn't know what they were doing, and that his son told him that I had been giving inappropriate political comments in class that are close to religious extremism. I was so confused and tried to defend myself, but he kept going about how much of a failure I am, for making these kids get the wrong opinions about the government and our history. He told me that if he heard that I did anything like this again, he would have me arrested. Then, he took his men and left. I was genuinely scared and I had never been insulted or humiliated like this before. Since Stephen was laughing in the back, I knew that things would get even worse from now on and they did. Over the next week, the kid treated me like trash. He would enter, throw his garbage at my feet, and then go on. He would constantly ask me to get him stuff and even literally stole money from my wallet once while I was outside. I once found myself locked in the bathroom and couldn't get to my class, and it was like I was facing high school bullying all over again from a child. My life became a living hell, and any time I tried to say anything to him, he would tell me that he would tell his dad. I tried talking to the principal, but he was as scared of his dad as anyone else. He told me that if I did anything that brought this kind of attention to the school again, then he would have to fire me. The principal also forced me to give the kid good grades even if he didn't deserve him and ironically, he rarely attended his exams in the first place. That night, I went home and just reflected for a bit about my whole passion and career. I was so fed up that I was ready to quit teaching altogether and do something else, but this was what I was good at and I didn't want to do anything else. I was so lost, so I went over to my friend who was an investigative journalist in a big newspaper. I talked to him for hours about the whole situation and how bad I was feeling, and when I told him the kid's dad's name, his eyes lit up. He told me that there are so many rumors about that man being corrupt and involved in shady business and nobody had the guts to pursue these rumors and check if he is dirty. I told him that I was on the brink of losing my job and he told me that if he exposes this guy, it may be his biggest story ever and a leap in his career. It seemed like there was a kind of mutual benefit for us so when I asked him if he'd be willing to follow this, he hesitated for a bit but then told me yes on the condition that I help him. I didn't know exactly what I could do to help him, but I knew that I could use Stephen and his extreme cockiness to find out some information about his dad, while my friend investigated sources and rumors like a journalist. I was determined to take the dad down, and I didn't even care what the kid might think if something happened to his dad. I was that far gone at that point. The next day, I had a completely different attitude going into class. Usually, I got an angry and resentful but since I knew that things were working behind the scenes, I got in pleased and happy and even shook Stephen's hand. He thought I was doing this out of fear, but I had a whole different game planned. We went on with the lesson with whatever disturbances he had and then it was lunchtime. During lunch, I went over to him to extract information. I first apologized and told him that I was treating him unfairly and that I want to start a new page. He made fun of the whole thing at first, but then he took the bait. I asked him why he came to our school in the first place and he told me that it was because of his dad's divorce. That was bait number one since it wasn't known that his dad was divorced in the first place and his wife even appeared with him several times in public. When I asked him if his dad helps him out with school stuff at home, he told me no and that Lara did. When I asked who Lara was, he got quickly confused and closed the subject. That was bait number two. I ended the conversation quickly and decided to fight another day. I went back to my journalist friend and told him what Stephen had told me and he got excited. He told me that the politician hasn't appeared with his wife recently in public and there was talk about problems between them. When I asked him if he knew Alara, he told me, no, and at first, we thought it was maybe a nanny of some sort, so we hatched a plan to find out. 
The next day, when Steven's driver came to pick him up from school, I went over there first before Steven went out of school and told the driver that Steven had a message for the nanny Laura. The driver got confused and told me that they don't have a nanny called Laura and asked me if I meant Miss Laura. He also told me her last name and that was all I needed. My friend kept investigating this Laura and found out that she was some Russian exotic dancer. We both had our theory that she was the politician's mistress, so it seemed more and more likely. It didn't stop there, however, my friend contacted several sources who did confirm that the politician got a divorce and he ran the story which made several headlines about a secret divorce and the rumors about the mistress kept on sizzling. For a couple of days, Stephen didn't go to school and the administration told us that it was because he was traveling. That one story about the mistress got so much heat that other journalists started investigating this politician more and more. My friend was contacted by this other journalist who was apparently investigating this politician for quite some time and they agreed to run a story together about the mistress, who they then later did confirm, and other dirty business the second journalist was suspicious about that they had to run together. Stephen came back to school by the end of the week, though, and he became much worse than before. He was sabotaging every teacher's work, vandalizing school property, and making everyone's life a living hell. I had had enough though, and I had Stephen stand in front of the whole class and I let out all I had to say about him. I told him that just because his dad is powerful doesn't mean that he's powerful, quite the opposite it meant that he was a weak child who hid behind his daddy. The kids started laughing and I continued. I told him that there wasn't a single person in the entire school, or perhaps his entire life who liked him and everyone who spent time with him only did so because he had money. I told him that if he's like this in high school, then when he grows up he'll become even more of an unpopular loser who will never be able to fit in, find a proper job, or even find love. I asked every single student in front of him what they thought about him and all of them said negative things. I could see that he was about to cry, but then he told me that he would tell his dad about this, and I told him that he may not see his dad for a long time and pulled out my phone to show him the news. Both journalists had succeeded in taking him down for the scandal about the Russian mistress, which made political wildfires but also got him for fraud, and pedophilia that he was conducting through Russia. The shock on the kid's face was priceless, and it did feel good even if it shouldn't have. I told him that he might have to find a new way to go home today, and that when he does go home he won't find his dad, who was most likely arrested for a wide range of crimes. The kid broke down in tears and told everyone that he was sorry. After this whole deal, he did stay in school, but the principal finally started punishing him. He got detention for like the entire school year and got banned from participating in all the school events. With his dad away, the kid did a 180 degree change and wouldn't let out a single peep in my class anymore. He became the outcast among the other kids, but he started doing better at school now that he was no longer such a hassle to deal with. The politician did go to prison and it was the biggest news in the city. My journalist friend got a massive boost in popularity and thanked me a ton, even though he was the one who helped me deal with the whole situation. On the last day of the school year, Stephen came to me and told me that he was sorry. He seemed genuine and told me that he recognizes the bad things his dad did and that he should have never acted the way he did. He thanked me for opening his eyes and changing his mindset about life and the fact that you can't always get what you want just because someone is there to get it for you. After this whole deal, I realized that revenge can be bittersweet, but that being strict and harsh can have its benefits, too. I was so tired by the end of the whole thing, though, that I rendered my resignation and decided to quit teaching. I got what I wanted, but I could also tell that the kid, even though he became a better person, was also depressed and missed his dad. Now, here is the end of our today's story. I hope you guys are enjoying my daily content. And, in my opinion, OP's humiliation of Steve was harsh and bitter, but it was necessary to make him see reality. And I'm pleased it all worked out in the end. Steve's pompous personality and entitled nature were also influenced by his father, and he got what he deserved in the end. Guys, I want to hear your opinions on this story in the comments section, or you can share a similar story with us, which I'd love to read. So before leaving, please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with us for more awesome stories.